Hey guys, welcome to Solve My Math Homework. We're the YouTube channel that solves the math problems our subscribers submit. So today we're looking at solving a rational equation. And we might not love this because not only do we have fractions, but we have multiple fractions and we have denominators that contain variables. So at first glance, it looks awful, but it's really not gonna be that bad. In fact, one of our first steps is going to be to clear those denominators. Not make common denominators, get rid of denominators. So let's look at our steps. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is state the domain of the equation or the relationship because it's not going to be any number or all real numbers. A domain is allowed values of x and we're going to have limitations on that because we have denominators that have variables in them. Okay, next thing we're going to do is find a common denominator. People say find the LCD. All you need is a common denominator. And don't worry, we're not going to use those denominators to create like denominators. We're going to use them to get rid of denominators making solving for x easy, then we're going to check our solutions and make sure they're not excluded values. So let's get started. Okay, so back up to the top, we talked about there would be limitations on the domain, cannot write with an eraser. So the domain is all of the allowed values of x. Okay, so why isn't every value of x allowed? Simply because we have denominators with x's in them, right? Okay, so x plus 2, if a denominator is not allowed to be 0, that means x plus 2 is not allowed to be 0. So what's x not allowed to be? Just solve this by subtracting 2, and you will see that x is not allowed to be negative 2 because that would make the denominator 0. Okay? Remember, why, why is it so important that we don't have 0 in the denominator? Remember, no, it is not okay to divide by 0. You cannot take 5 and divide it equally into groups of 0. It's not possible. It's undefined. We exclude those values from our relationship. Okay? So then we have a denominator here, x plus 2, so that has the same limitation. I don't have to write anything new. And then we have one with just x in the denominator. Okay, so x is the only thing in the denominator. Denominator is not allowed to be 0. That means x is not allowed to be 0. Okay, and that looks like a 6, so let's rewrite that in case maybe you put this on mute and you thought I wrote a 6. Still the worst 0 ever. Sorry. All right, so this is perfectly acceptable. When we say x is not allowed to be something, it is assumed that all other real numbers are allowed. Your teacher may have you write interval notation. When you do interval notation, remember soft brackets say that I'm not allowed to use something. So we're gonna do soft bracket negative infinity because negative infinity is not a number, so we can't say it's included. So negative infinity can be used up until negative two, but not including negative two, so another soft bracket. In addition to, so we put this little union symbol, we can use everything from negative 2, but not including negative 2, up to 0, because 0 is another excluded value, so not including 0, another soft bracket. And then finally, we can use everything from 0 to infinity. Okay, so this is interval notation, right? Interval notation is over here. This is just regular domain notation. We can write all real numbers except negative 2 and 0. That would be a third way to write it. Generally speaking, your teacher will take either this interval notation on the left or this notation on the right. Okay, so when we solve our problem, we need to remember that negative 2 and 0 are not allowed to be solutions. Okay, next thing we have to do is find that common denominator. So if we were adding 1 third plus, I don't know, 1 half, very easy to add. We would get common denominators, and how would we get them? We would say, well, I got a 3, I got a 2. If I multiply 3 times 2, my common denominator is 6. Okay, so we're going to do that same thing. It's just that we have variables, so it might be a little uglier. So we have x plus 2 here, we have x plus 2 here, and we have x here. That means our lowest common denominator, or the denominator that every fraction would need, would be x times x plus 2. There is no need to multiply these to distribute, just keep them separate like two factors next to each other, just like that. Okay, because what we're going to do is we're not going to create a common denominator. Your teachers might have you. It's not the best practice. The best practice to do is to use them to get rid of your denominators. So multiply everything by x times x plus 2, and when you do this, you will find all of your denominators divide out. Okay, so I put this on the next page a little cleaner than this. Nope. I didn't put it. There we go. Sorry about that. Okay, I knew I put it somewhere. Very neat. So we multiplied each term. Remember, if you multiply one thing in an equation, everything gets multiplied. So you multiplied each term by x times x plus 2. 
the next step is simply to cancel, divide out everything that divides out. X plus two divided by X plus two is one, so that cancels out. Let's use something darker than yellow, how about that? Okay, that cancels out, so that's gone, it divides out. X divided by X is one, X plus two divided by X plus two is one. So now we have to multiply by what's left. So what do we have left here? We have two times X, so we're gonna say two X. Okay, plus, what do we have left here? Be very careful here, we have three and X plus two. So do not forget to distribute. You have to multiply this three times the X and by the two. So you get three X plus six, okay? Don't put three X plus two, a lot of people do it, I see it all the time, okay? Equals, what do we have? We have a negative sign, we don't wanna lose our negative sign. And then we have X times X. So that just gives us a negative X squared. Okay, let's clean up the left side before we talk about what we're looking at here. 2x plus 3x, we would never leave it like that. We would say 5x. So we have 5x plus 6 equals negative x squared. Super. So anytime you see a power of 2, and it's the highest power in an equation, I want you to think, oh good, quadratics will never go away. You're going to use quadratic tendencies, all your quadratic strategies, to solve this problem. Okay, so let's do that by saying, well, what's a what's standard form and let's get a clean page too so remember and let's get a darker color we had 5x plus 6 equals negative x squared we know that quadratics in standard form are ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0 so we're going to get this thing to equal 0 and we're going to do that by moving this negative x squared to the left side so how do you get something from one side of an equation to the other? You use inverse operations. So instead of negative x squared, we add x squared, okay? That gives us x squared plus 5x plus 6 equals 0. We now have a quadratic in standard form. So we want to know factors. Let's see if there are factors. Can we factor this thing? So factors, two numbers that multiply to positive six, meaning same side, same sign, not same side, and they add to give us positive five, positive five, because they have to add to your linear term. And so I do, I have two times three is six and two plus three is five. So let's do that. X plus two times X plus three, both set equal to zero, right? x plus two times x plus three equals zero. Now remember, if these two things multiply to give me zero, then one or more of them equals zero. So we solve by saying, well, x plus two equals zero, x plus three equals zero, and we see that x equals negative two, and x equals negative three. Now I have a distinct familiarity that negative two is a number we've seen before today, and it is important because it is excluded from the domain. Okay, if we go back up and we look at our original problem, we said the domain was x cannot be negative two and x cannot be zero. So in our solution, we got x equals negative two and we got x equals negative three. Okay, so negative two is what we call an extraneous solution. Anytime you have a denominator that contains variables, you run the risk of having an extraneous solution. You, have, you run the risk of getting a solution that actually can't satisfy that equation because it makes it undefined. So we just cross it out. We simply don't write it down. We don't register it. We don't write that it's an extraneous solution. We don't even consider it because guess what? It's not a solution. So the solution to this is x equals negative three. That's it, you are done. Be sure not to write x equals negative two and negative three because most teachers will take off partial credit, but I have seen people mark it wrong because they know you didn't check your extraneous solutions. Okay, I hope that helped. If you have questions, pop them in the comments section. And remember, I only solved this problem because a subscriber sent it in. So if you're not yet a subscriber, hit the subscribe button. And when you get stuck in math and need to know how to do something, you can send it to me and I'll show you. Thanks for watching.